This is ABC 15 News. And thank you for joining us. I'm Stephanie Hawkridge. Many of you just got through watching the Oklahoma Texas Tech football game and plenty of sports to talk about here in our state. Steve Kuz joins us now. And Steve, uh, start with Cardinals. Yeah, we got a yeah. big college game to talk, Stephanie. But first, let's go to the pros. The Cardinals with an opportunity to become the first 5 0 team this season. Instead, they struggled on Thursday night against the St. Louis Rams. I'm Steve Kuj. I'll be your host in for Craig Fooey tonight. The Rams defense holding the cards to just three points. The Cardinals defense, who has been praised since the season began, gave up two big pass plays, which was all those Rams needed to grab the 17-3 win. But the biggest concern for the team has to be the protection from the offensive line. Kevin Cobb, our quarterback, guy sacked nine times the other night and eight times on Sunday. But head coach Ken Wisnut didn't blame the O-line. Nope. Instead, he said they'll continue to work on improvements. I mean, you know, we're, we're working every week. I don't... Are we disappointed that we had that many sacks? Absolutely. Are we working to get better? Do we expect to get better? Sure we do. I mean, the guys are working at it. We got to work better at it. Oh, you take it personal. You know, you, you never want to see uh, your quarterback get hit. You know, he's a personal friend. He's not just a teammate. So uh, when you see your guy put a hit on him, that's uh, that's the hardest part. But, uh, you know, uh, beyond what's been said, Kevin's a tough guy. And uh, he's taking those shots, and he knows some of them are on him. And he was the first one to step up after the game and say, he's got to do a better job too. But we as the offensive line want to keep him clean. We want to be perfect for him. And uh, we know what he can get done when he stays upright. I mean, I think it shows what we always knew. You know, a lot of people said he wasn't tough. He'd been knocked out a couple games. He'd, he'd gotten some shots put on. But uh, he's willing to stand in there and, and get a bloody nose. And uh, he's proved that. And uh, we want to keep fighting for him. You know, we take that stuff personal. And uh, we got work to do. We owe it to him. So as they say, there's always room for improvement. The Phoenix Suns kicking off the preseason next week, starting with the Kings on Wednesday, and then they open at home against the Portland Trailblazers on Friday. Paul Calvisi caught up with the Suns forward Jared Dudley at the team's annual media day. Well, I think he did, but we'll get back to that later. The Arizona Wildcats making the trip to the Northern California area to take on the 18th ranked Stanford Cardinal in what will be a very high scoring game. You got to check this one out. Let's get right into it, guys. Stanford gets on the board first with an 11 yard touchdown pass from Josh Nunes. And you're going to see that right here. Touchdown, boom, to Zach Ertz now. Next, Stanford leading 7-0 in the first. And then in the second, Kadeem Carey rushes into the end zone there from 13 yards out to tie the game at 7. Then the Wildcats leading 10-7. Nunes completes a pass to Levine Poilolo from 12 yards out. And Stanford takes that lead right back, 14-10. The Wildcats had another field goal, and that makes this just a one-point game headed into the half. In the third quarter, both coaches wondering just where where the defense is. Matt Scott finds Terrence Miller on a 27-yard pass. That sets up a one-yard touchdown run by Carey. And the Wildcats take a 20-14 lead. But Stanford not holding back. They respond. Nunes carries the ball in himself. Stanford goes up 21-20 with just over eight minutes to play in the third. Scott finds Hill from 12, and 12 yards out. The extra point is good, and Arizona regains the lead 27 to 21. Then, with just 28 seconds to play in the third, Arizona up 33 to 28. Kelsey Young running that ball in from 55 yards out for the touchdown. The Cardinal go for two, but guys can't seem to convert, so Stanford leads by one heading into the fourth. As for the Wildcats, had two touchdowns, but so does Stanford, including a touchdown with just 48 seconds to play to tie the game at 48 all, sending us to overtime. And Stanford, they would end up with a 21-yard rushing touchdown by Stevon Taylor to give Stanford the unfortunate win, 54 to 48. Well, here's something you guys have got to see. We all know that Michael Phelps could swim. That's no mystery. But turns out the man who's won Olympic 18 gold medals can also golf too. Just watch this. A famous face here at King's Barks. Michael Phelps, he's learned the art for an American with quite a high handicap. And we've got it on tape for him. Look, uh, that was good. <laughs> Now, that is absolutely insane, Stephanie. I can barely make putts from five feet away, let alone 153 feet. If you're counting there, that took 17 seconds to get from when he hit the ball all the way to the hole. 
not bad at all for a swimmer. No, not bad at all. In fact, it went a lot slower than what we're used to. Michael Phelps is usually known as, you know, the fast one, so. <laughs> yes, he is. You can say that. Yeah, okay. Steve Koosh, thanks so much. All right, for those of us waiting for more milder temperatures, the wait appears to be over. Thank goodness we're going to take a live look outside, and it was picture perfect out there. No triple-digit temperatures today or in the forecast. Rich Dahlquist, let's talk about it. That was nice, and if you notice, he kept the putter right in here. He did, he's really good on the breaststroke. But um, but um, bump. Yes, are we gonna some of the loops? And now your Sanderson Ford Sports. The Suns kick off their preseason games next week, starting with the Kings on Wednesday. Then they open up at home against the Portland Trailblazers on Friday. Paul Calvisi caught up with the Suns forward Jared Dudley at the team's annual media day. Media day is a is a day that you know you come in, you introduce. Hopefully Alvin's in a good mood. We gotta butter him up, but uh, no, it's time to work though. Now on to high school football and the game of the week as voted by you on our Facebook poll takes us out to Chandler where the 5 and 1 Desert Ridge Jaguars are battling the also 5 and 1 Basha Bears. Desert Ridge comes out swinging a 25-yard run by JJ Hussar gets Desert Ridge on the board early but the extra point is blocked. 6 nothing Jaguars. Then Brendan Smith finds Manny Figueroa he runs this one all the way in for the touchdown to put Desert Ridge up 13-0 at this point. Basha turns the ball over three times in the red zone, all in just the first half alone. You can't do that. Desert Ridge gets the win, 48-28. The Highland Hawks now looking to take down the undefeated Desert Mountain Wolves. The Hawks strike first. Ryan McCord on the sweep gets into the end zone to give the Hawks a 7-0 lead. Desert Mountain's Kyle Allen answering back, though, finds Mark Andrews for the 43-yard bomb to shoot the Hawks up 14-7. The Hawks get the upset on this one, 34-31. A big matchup now between the Desert Vista Thunder and the Hamilton Huskies. The Huskies jump out to a 16-0 lead on this seven-yard run by Stevon Adams. Then in the second, Hamilton attempts a fake punt, but A.J. Thigpen can't handle that snap and is taken down on the one-yard line. Desert Vista capitalizes off the miscue, and Jarek Hilgers gets the Thunder on board to make it 16-6. Huskies add to another touchdown in the third. This time, Thigpen finds Israel Simpson from 12 yards out. Hamilton gets the win, 23-13, your final. The 4-2 Paradise Valley Trojans up against Arcadia Titans in Phoenix. On PV's first possession, Ryan Finley finds Devon Graffis for the one-yard touchdown to put the Trojans up 7-0. Next possession. This time, Finley finds Joey Gatewood from 10 yards out, and PV is now up 14-0. Arcadia with the chance to finally score in the second, but they fumble the ball in the one-yard line. Uh-oh, a Trojans ball. But that possession ends in a safety. Paradise Valley gets the win, 38-23, your final. Our hit of the night coming from this game. Arcadia quarterback Pete Campbell on the run. He avoids a tackle and just about has the touchdown, but ouch! Leaps over Paradise Valley linebacker Blake Harris. Jesse Jackson right behind him to make the stop. Nice play. I was feeling that one in the morning. Saguaro in pink jerseys tonight against Washington to show their support against the fight against breast cancer. Washington was overmatched in this game from the very start. Saguaro took a 40-6 lead into the second quarter. Cash Robinson extends the Saguaro lead to 47-6 after this nice touchdown run. Saguaro wins this one big time, 76-6. Ooh. Our play of the night coming out of Washington Saguaro game. A little fumble ruski action here on fourth and one. Washington quarterback James Rasmussen sets that ball down on the ground. Caleb went to pick it up. The play works. Washington can get the first down out of it. On to the Buena Colts making the trip from Sierra Vista to face off against the Westwood Warriors over in Mesa. And Buena making a statement early on. Ben Sims runs the ball in from midfield to get the Colts on the board. And Buena quarterback Raphael Adames hands it off to Demique Drake for the touchdown. Next possession. It's Adames and Drake again. Buena gets this one in the win. 47 to 33 the final. To Tucson, the 6-0 Sabino Sabercats take it on the 5-1 Empire Ravens. We pick it up at 7-0 Sabino in the first. Empire in red, Sabino with the ball. It's Sineath Don. 140 pounds this guy weighs, finds the holes and outruns the defense. A 50-yard touchdown scamper there. The Sabercats take a 14-0 lead. Later in the first, 
The Ravens trying to get something going here, but quarterback Grayson Weeks is sacked by Zach Joseph and Collins Law. Still in the first, more Sabino Cody. Lloyd would not be brought down in the backfield. He won't be brought down at all, as a matter of fact, in the secondary either. This run goes for 62 yards, and this one, all Sabino. They get a huge win, 65-0 in the final. All right, and how cool is this? In Colorado, in Manitou Springs, a high school kicker, Ashley Benson, was named homecoming queen. By the way, she just so happened to have scored 18 points in the last two games of the season. That's some real girl power there. Yeah, not bad. I wonder, do you wear the tiara? Do you wear the helmet? I mean, that's, that's quite a you know, you decision just... you have to make in the second half there. <laughs> I think she should have worn the tiara, gone out, done her kicking. The tiara right? on top of the football helmet. I think she is owed at least that much at this point. I agree, yeah. You want to do a final check of the forecast? Yeah. Or do, would you have, do, do you have an opinion on this? <laughs> I have no opinion on the tiara. I just so. wear it with pride. <laughs> we'll see you tonight.